Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Episode number 118, Wearing the Sea, Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains. Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we decide if we're going to be an engine or a caboose, side note, the caboose follows the rest of the train, the engine leads the rest of the train, and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. As we creep into December and start enjoying the holiday festivities, from a hockey perspective, most coaches, players, and teams have a pretty good pulse on how the season is going so far. I'm sure there have been some promising moments, some spectacular plays, comebacks, and victories, as well as some blown leads, glaring mistakes, and other early memories nobody wants to remember or talk about. Those are the challenging times where no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it just doesn't work out the way you hoped. Throughout my life as a player, coach, trainer, parent, and entrepreneur, when I think about the word leadership, when I've worn any of those hats, the time window when someone had to step up and take charge, including myself, was not when things were going well most often. It was when things have gotten off the rails and everybody was reeling, trying to figure out what to do next. Sounds like a typical hockey season, doesn't it? Playing hockey is a gift, a privilege. It's a free roller coaster ride we get to jump on each day at full throttle, experiencing all the ups and downs the season provides. If you're not riding the horse that crosses over back and forth constantly between easy and struggle, you're not getting to the sweet spot where it's uncomfortable, disagreeable, and most importantly, is where leaders are discovered and emerge. Now, I've had the opportunity to wear a letter at different times throughout my career, being an assistant or captain of a team. But when I tried to remember if I had any instruction those first couple times on how to be a captain or leader of a team, I couldn't find a single recollection of anyone saying, these are the job requirements to be one of the leaders on this team. Right as I finished writing that sentence, all of a sudden, this episode took a major pivot because what I originally thought I was going to do completely got flipped, and this episode found its heartbeat, and he goes by the name of Ross Bernstein. If you don't recognize the name, Mr. Bernstein was one of the first guests I had on the Hockey Journey podcast, episode number 10 if you're interested, and for a long time, he wrote sports books. In his episode, like usual, we peel back the layers of the onion and heard his hockey journey. Why he came to mind is because of the fact he's written nearly 50 sports books. One of them fits perfectly with what I hope to accomplish with this episode. And what might that be? Question mark? Well, Ross happened to have penned a book titled Wearing the Sea, Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains. As I mentioned, when I think back to youth hockey and when the captain's ship started to be designated, I can't remember anyone talking to me about what the job requirements were to wear a letter. It wasn't until I was in high school when my coach, Ken Staples, shared a sentence with me on what it meant to be a captain. He was a former professional baseball player and well-respected in the coaching world, so when he spoke, I listened. One day, he brought me into his office before one of our early practices during my second season under his guidance. He had me sit down and handed me a note card and said, Put this in your wallet and read it often. The letters on the card were few, but carried a powerful message, 
that has stuck with me my whole life. It said, Your actions speak louder than your words. As I read it out loud to him, being a 17-year-old, not knowing much about life, I asked him, What's that mean, coach? He said, Captains are leaders, meaning they dictate the tempo and pace of practices and games. They don't have to say much of anything. If they are the hardest worker for every drill and practices and give their best effort every shift in every game, your teammates will follow. I never forgot that moment in my life with him. From that point on, if anyone wanted to be the hardest worker in games or practices, they knew I'd be close to them vying for the worker bee top spot. In Ross Bernstein's book, Wearing the Sea, Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains, there are five chapters, each asking a specific question. Chapter 1. What did it mean for you to wear a letter? Chapter 2. Who were the captains you really looked up to or admired and why? Chapter 3. So how do coaches and GMs really choose their captains? Chapter 4. What's the deal with players-only meetings? And Chapter 5. What life lessons do you think you learned from wearing a letter that you now been able to apply to business? For the rest of this episode, I'm going to share some quotes from players, captains, that I looked up to, idolized as a kid, and was privileged enough to play with and against some of those heroes to me during my professional and NHL career. With the help of Mr. Ross Bernstein, we're going to focus on Chapter 1's question, What did it mean for you to wear a letter? So without further ado, let's begin. Wearing the Sea, Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains by Ross Bernstein Forward to the book number one by Bobby Clark 1,144 games played in the NHL Being the captain is a responsibility to the organization and to your teammates that's carried out on a daily basis. You're a player and you have to do your job out on the ice. Yet at the same time, you also have to be a leader by doing things the right way every day. That means you practice hard every day. You have to try your hardest in every game. And you have to constantly lead by example on and off the ice. It's about doing things the right way, even when no one is looking. That's what being a captain is all about in my eyes. He continues, the big takeaway from my experience of being a captain is in my ability now to make tough decisions. If there are decisions that have to be made and you're in charge, then you have to make them. You're not going to please everybody, that's for sure, but that's what being a leader is all about, making the decision that you feel is right and then standing behind it, one way or the other, regardless of the consequences or the outcome. End quote. Forward to the book number two, Scott Stevens, 1,635 games played in the NHL. Wearing the C was very, very special, truly an honor. I was asked to wear the C for New Jersey and St. Louis, and it was a sincere privilege to do so. It's also a big responsibility, though, because you're the guy everyone looks up to. So that means you got to do things right. He continues, My definition of leadership is leading by example, period. I tried to set the tone in practice and in games, and as the captain, you hope that your teammates simply follow your lead. If everybody sees you're doing all the little things, making sacrifices, and doing whatever it takes to win, then they'll follow. That's the goal as a leader. At the end of the day, you want your teammates to be behind you, just like you're behind them. When that occurs, amazing things can happen. End quote. Quote number one. Ray Bork. 1,612 games played in the NHL. I broke in with the Bruins back in 1979 and learned a ton from our captain at the time, Wayne Cashman. Terry O'Reilly took over for Wayne a few years later, and he was incredible as a leader. 
I sort of grew up watching and learning from those two what it meant to be a professional. So when I was later asked to wear the C for a team like Boston, with such a rich history and tradition, at first I was scared to death. I embraced it, though, and considered it to be a huge honor and privilege. I wore that C with a lot of pride for 14 years. It was an incredible experience for me. Leading by example meant being prepared, being dedicated, and being a great teammate. Those were natural instincts that I had and were things that I tried to pass on to other teammates. It wasn't always easy wearing the C, though. Sure, when you're winning, it's great, but when times are tough, you're the guy everyone turns to. I learned pretty quickly that you have to be able to bring people together when things aren't going well. You have to step up and try to find solutions to problems on a daily basis. It took me a while to grow into the role, but I eventually got it figured out and became very comfortable with it. End quote. Quote number two, Rod Brindamore, 1,484 games played in the NHL. It's a huge honor to be named captain, especially in the sport of hockey, where it really means something. Hockey is the ultimate team sport, in my opinion. So to be recognized as the leader by your coaches and peers is pretty special. I took it very seriously. My goal was to be the hardest working player every day. I wanted to lead by example and hoped that everybody else would just follow along. I think to be a great leader, you have to be yourself. That's the key. You can pattern yourself after someone who you like and admire, but at the end of the day, you have to be real. People will see right through phoniness, and they won't follow you. The big thing for me, too, was just the concept of the team. I was just one guy, so I really relied on my teammates, especially the veterans who'd been through it before. I wanted to embrace and empower those guys. When we won the Cup in Carolina in 06, yes, I wore the C, but we had a lot of great leaders on that team. You can't just do it with one guy. You need a core group of guys who are all going to set the tone and hold everybody accountable in order to be successful. End quote. Quote number three, Neil Broughton, 1,099 games played in the NHL. What did it mean to me? It meant that I had to lead by example and work hard every night. It meant that I had to spend more time working with the younger guys and sort of mentor them whenever I could. It meant that I had a few more responsibilities out on the ice. It meant that I had to communicate what the players wanted to say to the coaches and sort of be that go-between guy. And it meant that I had to deal with the media after games and whatnot. Other than that, it didn't really mean that much to me, to be honest. It was just part of my job. I will say this, though. It meant a lot more to be chosen as one of the captains by your teammates as opposed to being named by your coach. End quote. Quote number four, Zdeno Chara. 1,680 games played in the NHL. It's a huge honor to be selected as your team captain, a true privilege. You don't demand others to serve you. You have to be there to serve others. You have to be there for your teammates no matter what. You have to have a feel for what they need and when they need it. It's a lot of responsibility, and I have never taken that for granted. You have to be a good leader not only in good times, but also in bad ones, which can be tough. I just tried to be there for my teammates and try not to act differently than anybody else. Just because I wear the C doesn't mean I am any better than anybody else. It just means I'm expected to lead by example and do the right things on and off the ice to represent my organization. I take great pride in that and will never take that for granted. End quote. Quote number five, Mike Aruzioni. To be asked to wear the C for the 1980 U.S. Olympic team was one of my proudest moments as a hockey player. To be the captain of that team, a captain among captains, was truly an incredible honor. We had an entire locker room of leaders, though. 
Nearly every one of those guys on that team had been his team's captain in high school or in college. That was no coincidence either. That was really important to Herbie. He wanted guys with leadership characteristics. One of the things I really tried to do with that team was to keep everybody together. After practice, I would organize outings for all of us to go to dinner or to a bar or just hang out or whatever. Great teams historically are full of guys who genuinely like each other. So I wanted to make sure that we were all friends and that we got along. That can be tough on teams like that, where everybody came together from all across the country for a short period of time. One of the things that I'm most proud of is the fact that we became a very close-knit group. Everybody respected each other and trusted each other, and that translated into success for us out on the ice. End quote. Quote number six, Bill Guerin, 1,263 games played in the NHL. I'd worn the A for about 12 seasons in the NHL, but never got to wear the C until I was 36 years old when I was with the Islanders. So it was a big deal for me. It sort of validates you and all the hard work you've put in over the years. I had signed there as a free agent and found out at my press conference when the GM, Garth Snow, announced it. I was shocked. I really was, totally blown away by the gesture. My whole family was there, and I'll never forget it. It was one of the proudest moments of my career. I mean, it's one of the biggest honors you can get in hockey. Just huge. I'll never forget seeing that big C sewn onto my jersey for the first time. I almost lost it. No kidding. When you wear the C, you're a representative of your teammates and of your organization. To know that they value the way you perform on the ice and the type of person you are, that's an incredible feeling. End quote. Quote number seven. Brett Hedekin. 1,039 games played in the NHL. I wore the A in Vancouver, Florida, and Carolina, and it meant a great deal to me. To wear a letter at any level is a big deal. As players, we all strive to be recognized as leaders, so it's a big honor. It means you're respected by your teammates, so I took a lot of pride in it. The letter serves as a constant reminder of the level of responsibility you assume when you agree to wear it. He continues, It means working hard to get better every day because you owe it to your teammates. Beyond that, I just tried to be there for my teammates as best I could and to try to pick them up when they were down. End quote. Quote number eight. Phil Housley. 1,495 games played in the NHL. I really enjoyed being a captain over the years. The accountability piece really drove me. I was never going to ask someone to do anything that I wasn't willing to do myself. Good leaders back up what they say. If I had to get a guy to work harder in practice, then I took it upon myself to be the hardest working guy in practice. That was how I saw it. Overall, though, it's an honor because it means you're regarded by your coaching staff as one of the leaders on the team. You essentially become an extension of the coaching staff. You become their voice in the locker room. End quote. Quote number nine, Brett Hall. 1,269 games played in the NHL. It's hard for me to put into words what it meant, to be honest, because what it meant to me is different than what it means. I went from being the star player of the team, the guy who could go about his business and be a little loose and have fun, to the guy who has to now lead by example and do all the right things. I gotta be honest, that was a tough transition for me. Wearing the C forces you to take responsibility for your teammates to another level, if that makes sense. When they put that C on your jersey, it can no longer just be about you. It's now about everybody else. It's all about the team. End quote. Quote number 10. Jamie Langenbrunner. 1,109 games played in the NHL. I also got to wear the C with Team USA at the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. That was probably the single greatest honor I've ever had in my career. 
Winning the Stanley Cup is incredible, but to represent your country in that way is almost beyond words. So it means a great deal to me. That locker room was full of captains, so it wasn't like I was going to say anything that they hadn't already heard or even said before themselves. So my message to them was basically, the sooner we all check our egos at the door and come together as a team, the sooner we can focus on what it's going to take to win the gold medal. End quote. Quote number 11, Igor Larionov, 921 games played in the NHL. I got to wear the C for the Russian Olympic team in Salt Lake City, and it was just an incredible honor. To represent my country, what could be better than that? And to be named as team leader by our coaches, that was one of the highlights of my career. Being the captain means being a professional. It means leading by example. It means doing anything in order to help your team win. End quote. Quote number 12. Troy Loney. 624 games played in the NHL. My story with wearing the C is kind of neat, and that I was the first ever captain for the expansion Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. It meant a great deal to me. In hockey, especially, it was a big deal to be named as the team captain. You're expected to lead by example on the ice and in the locker room, and you have to be the liaison between the players and the coaches. You have to constantly keep the coach on top with the temperature of the team and let him know what's going well and what isn't. It's a lot of responsibility. Not only do you have to go out and play well, you have to do so many other things for the good of the team. End quote. Quote number 13. John McClain. 1,194 games played in the NHL. The key to being a good captain is not changing who you are. You have to be yourself. You have to be genuine and stay true to who you are. You can't fake being a leader. Either you are or you aren't. If you try too hard, the guys will see through that and it just won't work. Now that I'm in coaching, I see it from the other side and it still rings true. You have to be yourself. Guys will respect you if you lead by example and work hard every day. There's no secret. It's just doing the right things every day and being yourself. End quote. Quote number 14. Paul Martin. 870 games played in the NHL. As for my style, I just tried to work hard and set a good example and then hope it rubs off on everybody else. My teammates are professionals, otherwise they wouldn't be here, so I don't feel like I need to show them the way or anything like that. For me, it's consistently doing the right things, like communicating with everyone effectively and being positive. Beyond that, it's just being there for my teammates and doing whatever they need me to do in order to help the team win. End quote. Quote number 15, Marty McSorley. 961 games played in the NHL. I wore the A in Los Angeles, and certainly it was an honor. Being very blunt, however, I think a lot of people put too much credibility on who is actually wearing the letters out on the ice. You know, in most instances, management will decide who wears the letters, but in reality, the true decider is in the locker room. More often than not, the true leaders on your team are the guys who don't even wear those letters at all. They are the to-go-to guys, your veterans, who lead by example. The players who command respect, those are your true leaders, regardless of whether or not they wear an A or a C. End quote. Quote number 16. Gordy Howe, 1,767 games played in the NHL. I worked extremely hard and gave it everything I had every time I went out on the ice. I always figured that if you went out and gave 100%, then you could feel good about yourself at the end of the day, win or lose. I was proud of the fact that I always stood up for myself as well as my teammates too. That was important. I never wanted anyone taking liberties with me or my teammates, and I was willing to stand up for them no matter what even if it meant dropping the gloves every now and then. The way I saw it, 
You were never going to win any Stanley Cup if other teams knew that they could push you around. Heck, I had eight siblings growing up as a kid in Saskatoon, so it seemed like I was always fighting. End quote. And quote number 17, Wayne Gretzky, 1,487 games played in the NHL. It doesn't matter if you're elected captain by the players or appointed by management. The honor is equal. Either way, you have people who are trying to accomplish the same thing as you, winning Stanley, putting their confidence in you, and basically telling you they trust you to lead them there. It's about respect and trust, as well as leadership. I don't think you can become a captain without earning respect first. End quote. Okay then, how awesome was all of that leadership goodness? If you haven't thought about being a captain, dreamed one day of being one, or currently are wearing a letter and are looking for ways to upgrade your knowledge on how to become even a better leader than you are today, I can't think of a more fantastic way to gain some insight and advice from some of the best that have already been there and done that. My hope is that the leadership section of your brain has started to percolate with thoughts of improvement. Let's learn a little bit about the author of this awesome book, Where in the Sea? Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains, and then we'll wrap it up. Ross Bernstein is a best-selling author of nearly 50 sports books, a world-renowned and award-winning peak performance business speaker who's keynoted conferences on all seven continents, which not many speakers at his level can say. He's been featured on thousands of television and radio programs over the years and has spent the better part of the past 25 years studying the DNA of championship teams, interviewing thousands of players and coaches. You can check out the rest of his book collection, like America's Coach, a biographical journey of the late hockey icon Herb Brooks, The Code, The Unwritten Rules of Fighting and Retaliation in the NHL, and Raising Stanley, What It Takes to Claim Hockey's Ultimate Prize. You can check everything out at rossbernsteinspeaking.com forward slash books. That's Ross Bernstein speaking.com forward slash books. I'll put the link in the description so you can check out his whole collection. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed this segment on Wearing the Sea, Leadership Secrets of Hockey's Greatest Captains. Before I forget, if you or your player are looking for ways to amp up your stick skills training at home, I'd love to have the opportunity to help guide you down my proven off-ice stick handling and shooting path. Just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com. That's OnlineHockeyTraining.com to learn more. One last thing, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon, and do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.